Hello, and welcome to another short vox. I'm Zach Thaw. And if you listened to our last vox, Thoughts on the Space Wolves, on Tuesday, you heard me mention that I would be doing a short vox on Rabut Gilliman, his origins, as well as his importance to the Empire of Man. Yet, the more I thought about it, the more I realized I can't do that. Not if we're going to cover the Ultramarines in full. Rabut Gilliman deserves a full episode on Warhammer 40K's grim history from the beyond. Now don't worry, faithful listeners. I promise Gilliman, and that is what you shall have. Instead of giving you a detailed look at the Primar, I will be pulling out the magnifying glass and zooming in on one of his most important moments in the history of the Empire, the Battle of Koth. This is a two-parter, and while Yuks and I are on vacation to Terran 42, I will drop these two, as well as a couple on the other Primark we talked about, Ryan L. Johnson. So without further gilding the lily, and no more ado, ladies and gentlemen, the Battle of Kalth. The Battle of Kalth, also known as the Kalth Atrocity, took place at the beginning of the Horus Heresy in 007.31M. Little did the Empire of Man realize, at the time, that nearly half the legions of the Space Marines, the Emperor's Angels, had gone rogue, and decided to turn on the Empire of Man. Led by the War Master Horus, he made plans for what would become known as the infamous Drop Site Massacre on Estehan V. A devastating blow to the Empire, yet he knew that he needed more. Say what you will about Horus, but none can say he was nothing less than a brilliant tactician. While he personally led the battle on Estevan V, he then sent the 17th Legion and the Primarch Logar and the Word Bearers on a mission to strike against the Imperium. The War Master was keenly aware of the bitter hatred that Lorgar had for his Primarch brother, Robut Gilliman, and his 13th Legion, the Ultramarines. Lorgar was a pious man, and thought of his father, the Emperor, as not just his father, but a deity that all should follow. In every world he conquered, he oversaw the building of massive temples to the Emperor of Mankind, slowing his conquest. The Emperor grew impatient, with the word bearers' progress in the Great Crusade as they began to delay longer and longer at their conquest because of these temples to honor him. You see, it may seem strange to you folks now in the 41st millennium, but the emperor never saw himself as a god. In fact, he was an atheist. In 963.m30, the emperor sent Malkador the Sigilite, first among his counselors, and Robut Gilliman of the Ultramarines to correct Lorgar's ways. At his orders, the word bearers were publicly censored, and the city of Monarchia, on the distant world of Kerr, along with its false temples, were destroyed by the warriors of Ultramar, as an object lesson in the folly of false religion. The entirety of the 17th Legion was then forced to kneel in the ashes of their devotion, while the Ultramarines stood over them in judgment which they had seen as worthy devotions, now labeled treasonous. The Ultramarines had taken no pleasure in this act, which was intended to teach Lorgar and his Astartes to adhere to an atheistic doctrines of the imperial truth rather than spread the false belief that the emperor was divine to all the worlds that they conquered. Lorgar's spirit was crushed. His father, nay, his deity rebuked him and used his own brother to do it. While well, the whole thing was supposed to teach the word bearers a lesson, it did the opposite. It was too much for the mighty Primarch, and he went into the stars in search of a worthy god to worship. And at the end of his pilgrimage, he found four. Yes, that would be the chaos gods from the warp. Now gifted with their powers, he turned his hatred on the Empire. And more importantly, the ones who had humiliated Logar's sons, the Ultramarines, and their leader, Robert Gilliman. I must interrupt myself and say this could all have been avoided if the Emperor himself had shown up and rebuked the offerings of Lorgar. Instead, he sent his servants, not even giving Lorgar, his son, known as the wisest of his children, the time of day. Yet I digress. Lorgar and Horus had planned the betrayal long before it took place, and Lorgar was primed for the slaughter. 
What started the treacherous plan was a series of orders issued under the seal of the War Master, dispatching a number of legions to campaigns in the further reaches of the Imperium. Of these, the Blood Angels were sent forth in their entirety to Cygnus, the Dark Angels to Segulsa, and the Ultramarines would muster alongside the word bearers at Kalth. Horus told Logar that he had fed Gilliman false intelligence in regard of a possible threat within the Verindian system of the Segmentium Tempestus, far to the galactic south of Terra. This supposed threat stemmed from the orcs of the Galschlak Empire. Horus had ordered the 13th and 17th legions to muster and meet the world of Kalth in the Ultramarines' realm of Ultramar in order to conduct a massive joint campaign to exterminate against the Galschlak Xenohold. A common mission for the Astartes during the final days of the Great Crusade. Gathering at Saturn, those of his legion who had been embarked on crusades in distant parts of the galaxy, Robut Gilliban would depart the solar system mere months before news of Horus's rebellion reached the Emperor's ears. The turbulent state of the Imperium in those years would see the Ultramarine's main strength journey to Kalth by a winding and obtuse trail which would cloak them from all attempts by terror to recall them or forewarn them of Horus's actions. The word bearers, delayed by the slaughter of Esteban, would not arrive at Kalth until the majority of the 13th Legion had already gathered. It would be at Kalth that Lorgar would launch a surprise attack on the Ultramarines whilst they were gathering for a campaign against the orcs against Kalschlak. The 13th Legion would be caught completely unaware while the word bearers would use the advantage of surprise to completely annihilate their hated rivals. The assault at Kalth would also allow the word bearers to reveal that they too now served the ruinous powers. Kalth was not chosen as the site of confrontation between the word bearers and the ultramarines by chance, for the word bearers intended to destroy one of the jewels in the ultramarines' realm of Ultramar. Just as the 13th Legion had destroyed one of the word bearers' greatest achievements, the sacred city of Monarchia, four decades earlier. The smiles on the Ultramarines' faces turned to shock as the word bearers suddenly attacked Gilliman's fleet, decimating it. The shock quickly turned to action as the Ultramarines' ground troops quickly found themselves impossibly outnumbered by their former allies as the infamous Battle of Kalth erupted. The word bearers slew the loyalist foes and droves in the early stages of the surprise attack and pushed them back over huge stretches of territory. The traitors rejoiced at the terrible blows that they were inflicting upon the legion that had once aided the emperor in humiliating them upon the world of Kerr decades before the start of the heresy when they had taken to task violations of the atheistic philosophies known as the imperial truth. Own on to them, Gilliman's flagship, which had survived the initial word bearer's attack on the Ultramarine's fleet, effected emergency repairs and regrouped with the other surviving Ultramarine starships in the space. Having taken stock of his remaining forces, Gilliman sent an immediate astropathic distress call to Macrag. The loyalist Marines of Kalth, Ultramarines all, had been forced into fighting retreat and soon occupied fortified positions. Many Ultramarines had been born on Kalth and proved more resolute than the word bearers anticipated. In space, Gulliman's vessels began hit-and-run attacks on their overconfident enemy. Gulliman assessed his ground troop positions and broadcast clear, concise orders to each pocket of defense, coordinating them into cohesive force. One Ultramarine force, led by Captain Ventanis, led a breakout and retook Kalth's defensive laser silos, aiding the sorely pressed Ultramarine fleet from the f surface of Kalth. Gulliman's depleted forces slowed the word barriers down long enough for the remainder of the Ultramarine legions to arrive and rout the traitor's 
space marines from the system, though at a heavy cost. The word bearers turn on Kalth's own orbital defense platforms on the Verindian star, stripping away outer layers of its photosphere and stabilizing it, ultimately rendering the surface of Kalth uninhabitable. At the same time, the word bearers had used the battle taking place on Kalth to summon a massive warp storm called the Rune Storm that was intended to cut off Ultimar from the rest of the galaxy and prevent Ultramarines from providing any reinforcements to Terra as Horus made his assault upon humanity's homeworld. Yet Robut, Gilliman, and a large portion of his legion had remained off-world as a result of the word bearers' devious assault upon the Ultramarines' fleet, bloodied but not unbowed. The Ultramarines received the Order of Malkador the Sigilite, the Emperor's Regent, while he was indisposed pursuing the secret Imperial Webway project and prepared to meet the needs of the Imperium's defense against the traitor legions as best he could. The wrath of Gilman would not be denied. Perhaps the Emperor himself would feel a tremor of fear as Robut used all of his skills and weapons of war in a desperate gambit against his enemy. His strikes were fast, tactical, and even, dare I say, fated to succeed. Perhaps even Mkulu had a hand in Gulliman's victory. <laughs> well, if he did, I'm not telling. In the end, Logar had proved his point, leaving the Ultramarines decimated, and the jewel of their system turned into a lifeless husk of a planet. Proving his point, and not wanting to battle to the death with Raboot Gulliman, his fleet disappeared into the warp leaving the Ultramarines in Tatarins. Gilman had won the day, but it was at best a Pyrrhic victory. His sons were decimated. The loss was totaled at about 120,000 dead, while 30,000 unable to continue the fight. And that is how our Vox ends. But don't worry. This is the first part. The second part... Robut finds vengeance as sweet as any dessert. Mm, say, like a chocolate fudge cake. Delicious and decadent. Feel free to like, comment, or follow. Until next time, this is Zekthoth, signing off.